Would you please turn your Bibles to Gospel according to Matthew chapter number 14 14 verses 13 to 21 Matthew 14 13 through 21 maybe the most popular story in the bible maybe one of the most popular passage in scriptures let's read that now when jesus heard this he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself but when the crowds heard it they followed jesus on foot from the towns When Jesus went ashore he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening his disciples came to him and said this is a desolate place and the day is now over send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Verse number 16 look at that but Jesus said to them they need not go away you give them something to eat they said to him we have only five loaves here and two fish and he said bring them here to me then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass and take the five loaves and the two fish he looked up to heaven and said a blessing then jesus broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds and they all ate and were satisfied and they took up 12 baskets full of the broken pieces left over and those who ate were about 5000 men besides women and um, children 5000 men besides women and uh, children they all got satisfied and 12 baskets full of broken pieces were left over the story we have some day school and everybody study learn and get excited and uh, we uh, discuss among ourselves uh, what kind of bread jesus broke was that uh, organic whole grain multi grain what kind of bread it was discussions um, go and uh, finally we get hungry and sometimes we go without satisfaction but these people got satisfied that's the beautiful thing they all got satisfied they ate the bread they didn't discuss about the bread they ate the bread and they got satisfied one of the biggest danger in christianity is super spiritualizing the scripture you are hearing me for a couple of years i go for the simple meaning direct meaning i don't bring in a revelation so much i just preach what jesus taught the plain truth the plain meaning but the common tendency is to super spiritualize read so much as revelation from the lord new things it which is not there in the test lord of new revelation super spiritualizing and we are good in that we who claim to worship god in truth and spirit we only think about truth and spirit we forget about our body the reality the real world we only concerned about abstract spirit people pentecostals are known as the spirit people only about the spirit we are not concerned about um, uh, the down to earth realities where people uh, get a dirt of the ground we are good in that this passage is calling us not to super spiritualize but live in the real world live in the real world I was reading about um, um, the most famous women missionary from Kerala, especially among the evangelical Christians. Uh, 
But in Kerala, she is not, she didn't become so popular. But she became popular in elsewhere, elsewhere. Elsewhere she became popular. In Israel, she was known as the ambassador from India. And um, Washington D.C., she addressed the Senate once. She traveled to most nations in the world. Sometimes people considered her as the best friend of Indira Gandhi. And people sent money to her care of Indira Gandhi. You know that person? She was from my place, nearby, near, near to my place, Kumbanada. Annama Maman. Uh, the, one of the greatest women missionaries. When she was only 16, she wrote the song, Logamam Gampira Varidil. Yatra Chayyum Nyan Krusha Noki. Even today, that is one of the classics in Malayalam hymns. She wrote it when it was, she was 16, 1930. Adavi in a Dale. All those songs. She traveled with Indira Gandhi. She had a very close relationship with Indira Gandhi. And she moved from Kerala when she was only 16 to Andhra Pradesh. And she served in Andhra Pradesh all her life. I have met her a couple of times when she used to come for Kumbhanada Convention. And I heard her by herself singing Logamam Gambira Vairithil. Um, my, my grandfathers, uh, they, uh, my, one of my maternal grandfather, he used to go to Andhra Pradesh to work with um, uh, Pastor Piti Chako, uh, Anama Maman, and all other people. So we had a kind of connection and we used to get information about that. In her life, she said, in one of her writings, she said, feeding people is the work of Jesus. And in Andhra Pradesh, she focused on reaching out to the poor people and feeding them. The coastal belt, Angkor, and all those areas, Elur, and all those places. And by feeding, she led one young man to Christ. Feeding, giving her food, even when they were starving. And that young man became one of the most prominent scholar, theologian, teacher uh, in Andhra Pradesh. And another person became the president of the same organization where she was working. Thousands of people. Feeding people instead of just super spiritualizing. In India, if you go to any part of India or the world, um, and if you say Mother Teresa, people will know. If you speak about um, those who are asking, uh, send me thousand dollars. I will give you a certificate and you keep in your home. The certificate and miracles will happen and you will become a billionaire. People may not know. There are plenty now. It, the number is not going down. The number is increasing. Uh, the other day I said, yesterday evening I said, uh, from Patandita, one man says, um, if you want to become a billionaire, you send me thousand rupees or dollar. And I will send you some prayer and you will become a billionaire. And people are giving money. Now already more than 3,000 people registered by paying this money. Uh, to, and he is a fraud. <laughs> In all his life he is doing fraud and uh, people, those who want to make money, time is running fast. They have money to give to this kind of people. No gospel worker will ever ask you money for praying for you. No follower of Jesus will ever ask money from you to pray for you. One Clear, litmus, test to know the pastor, preacher is a fake pastor or a true pastor is check whether they ask money or not. If they are asking money, 100 percentage. They are not follower of Jesus. You may see a lot of miracles. In India, a lot of gurus do much, much better miracles than these pastors. You want to know? I'll tell you, the gurus. Uh, they, don't, they don't know Jesus, but they do miracles. They do miracles. They prophesy. The gurus, Indian gurus' prophecies are 60% correct. Uh, American pastors' prophecies not even 40% correct. You saw the recent election. The, all the prophecies are false prophets. I call them, all of them, all those who prophesied false prophets. Mm, serving money. In Malayalam, there's a beautiful expression. I don't know it. Equivalent in English. That's the only intention. That's the only intention. Serve the ruler and... Uh, Get the perk. Uh, that is the only ministry they are doing. Money. They want to buy one more airplane for them. One more airplane. 
and for that they will do anything they will say anything supernatural super supernatural extra natural extra what terrestrial or whatever new new titles they will put for their tv program to make more money don't follow them follow jesus christ follow the word of god all fakers fraudsters and they cook up things to deceive your money their eyes are on your pocket their eyes are on your pocket i tell people don't even give to fundraisers any money you give to the needy directly because studies show that the money collected by fundraisers not even 20% they reach the needy 80% they account as administrative expense you know that plenty of fundraisers sir. you look at the media plenty of fundraisers good believable studies say 80% they they eat and less than 20% they reach the needy syrians they make fun by showing the picture of syrians or yemenis or ugandans or whatever but 80% they they eat and not even 20% they reach the needy you give you know the needy you can see if you have eyes you can see the needy around you and you can give to them directly uh, don't uh, trust any fundraising agency at all including international big agencies come back matthew 14 13 now when jesus heard this what he heard he heard that john the baptist previous passage i didn't read that john the baptist was put in prison by the herod the powerful ruler of the world the reason uh, he had an extra marital affair with uh, his brother philip's wife oh she must have been a beauty world beauty miss miss world, miss world she must have been herodias must have been a miss world so this man got he already has another wife and uh, now he, he is planning to divorce her to marry philip's wife and john the baptist said you are committing evil and in america we don't have a john the baptist they say is it is my leader it is okay if it is my leader it is okay if it is your leader no that is you cannot do it uh, in washington i will i i hesitate to say the name of those things once you take stand with politics you will white wash the sins of your leader your leader because that heavy slavery you already took by siding with a political party you became a slave and you will white wash the sin of the herod his eye is on herodias but john the baptist comes and says ah it is sin you cannot do it and herod must have warned him if you say it again i will kill you if you say it again i will put behind you behind the bars but john the baptist he says i came for declaring the way of the lord i don't i not worried about you herod you may have built the temple you have moved the capital to jerusalem but i don't care you i don't care you you may have built the temple for jews and all the jews consider you as great because they have no vision and i see the vision that you are a sinner you are a sinner you live in sin and i call you out and um herod put him behind the bar and one day herod this daughter came and danced before him and you know the story and herod beheaded john the baptist and when jesus heard this he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself but when the crowds heard it they followed him on foot from the towns when he you are shocked about what i said i am not shocked okay <laughs> christianity has gone too far and they think a gospel is in aligning with uh, herod no not at all when he went ashore he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them and healed their sick this is the only miracle in the gospels which is recorded in all the four gospels you know that all the four gospels uh, we have uh, this story all the four gospels all the four gospels uh, we have this story mentioned 
and especially in John, little bit explanation. John chapter 6, if you read, from this feeding, Jesus goes on to say that I am the bread from heaven. I am the living bread. I am the bread from heaven. And you eat me. And unless anyone eats of me, he has no share in my kingdom. And a beautiful teaching is given. Mark is giving some more explanation where a boy is coming. Pastor Babu Charyan was saying that. A boy coming with um, five loaves and two fishes. And uh, those things, uh, if you really want to know, uh, please uh, read uh, all these passages. Matthew, in some places, Matthew explains more than Mark. In other places, Matthew is summarizing it uh, than Mark or Luke or John. So to get a clear picture, better to read all, this, all, the, all the stories. Um, and then coming back, Jesus, he wanted some rest. He was ministering, busy. And disciples he sent out, chapter 10, he sent out and they came back. They also needed some rest. But the crowd followed Jesus. But soon, this compassionate Jesus, the one who has compassion over them, um, he gave his time for this crowd because he is a compassionate God. Compassion comes from God, comes from Jesus. He had compassion on them and he healed their sick. Was Jesus doing this work only then? No, he is doing even today. He is continuing his work. Jesus Christ is continuing his work of healing the sick even today. Our only hope is in the compassion of Jesus. Our only hope is in the compassion of Jesus. We need the compassionate eye of Jesus on us, on us, on us. Hallelujah. And if he sees you, you can be healed. Let me tell you, he heals today. He does miracles. He is not, he is not stopping any of the work he started. He says he has to do the work as far as it is the day. And he is doing that work. You can be healed today. No matter whether your sickness is small or big. He has compassion on you. He has compassion on you. Let me tell you. Probably this happened a year before he was killed. Who killed? The people. The world killed him. Uh, probably exactly a year before. Because John says it was on a Passover time. And the next Passover is uh, Jesus' uh, death. So John is giving a little more chronological uh, information than other Gospels. So I had no time to explain all those things. John got beheaded. And all those things I mentioned to you. The first thing, sorry. Um, Jesus had compassion and healed the sick. Our only way forward is to look for that compassion of Jesus for our healing. We need healing. Sometimes um, it may be physical. Some other times it may be emotional. At other times, it will be spiritual, spiritual healing. But Jesus, the Lord of heaven, he can heal you from any sickness, any kind of problem. Some, or I may say, I look at um, the healing of the Lord um, sometime this way. The healing starts here, but the healing is not getting complete here. It is completed when we are transformed. The healing starts here. Salvation, being saved. It starts here, but it's not complete until that day. We want everything completed here. Perfect uh, healing. But perfect healing is not happening. He is healing you so that you will know him a little more clearly, a little more closely. You will understand him. But you still have some decay, some sickness, some problem with you. To that you will never stop looking at him because you already received a healing. You receive the healing and you know that he can do it. Because you know that he can do it. You keep looking at him. That's what the Bible says. Uh, look unto him. Never stop. Never stop looking unto him. Keep looking unto him. Our way forward is to get the mercy, grace of Jesus Christ. And then Jesus had compassion. And then evening, wonderful disciples um, uh, Peter, John, and all those people, they came to Jesus and said, don't keep 
wisdom you are continuously teaching send them away this is a desolate place and the day is now over send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves when the evening came in jewish understanding evening starts at 3 o'clock 3 p.m. Eve- evening begins because sun goes down at uh, 3 p.m. and then when actual sun goes down that's the real evening so evening starting of the evening is at 3 p.m. probably the disciples came to jesus and said at 3 p.m. please send them away so that they can go to their own uh, places look at that verse number 16 put would you please put your finger on that but jesus said they need not go away i not sending them away they need not go away you give them something to eat you give them something to eat if you carefully study the life of jesus jesus had a fund and that fund was with uh, whom peter judas yeah the fund was with judas and that fund was for serving the poor because john says um, when judas went out they thought he is going out to serve the poor the only fund jesus had was for serving the poor and when we come to book of acts the jerusalem council they were discussing deeply about what kind of life those who came from non jewish background should continue four foundational things were mentioned and the fourth foundation was always serve the poor paul he had only one funding he never funded for building a church he had only one funding that was for serving the poor paul's funding was only for serving the poor let me tell you any church today or yesterday or tomorrow which does not have a fund for the poor is not the church of jesus christ be very careful be serious about it. any church that has no fund for the poor not looking for return never looking for return just giving like jesus has done is not a church of jesus christ think about our church we fall short of the glory of god often but we can come back when we study the word of god Jesus says disciples you are responsible to feed them you are responsible you give them something to eat they need not go away you give them things to eat all the biblical scholars say that it was a very clear teaching the disciples understood the apostles from the early period they were serving people they were give feeding the people feeding love feast was the real classic lifestyle of the early church no one should go hungry jesus will not send you away hungry so apostles uh, they didn't super spiritualize it if jesus told this thing to today's apostles and pastors they'll say jesus what are you saying they are full with the spiritual food uh. you are to so talking about the spiritual kingdom no you are talking about the spiritual kingdom now you fed them spiritually so now the, you send them away but jesus says uh, real bread and fish real food you have to give them they need not go away you feed them you feed them you give them something to eat but those days they said 17 oh sorry lord we are ready to feed them but unfortunately we don't have anything we have only five loaves here and two fish that to andrew stole from one little child no he got it happily the child was given as pastor babuchari was saying because it is for the lord five loaves and two fish that's all we have nothing else and elsewhere they said uh, another occasion this much money we have but that is not n- enough that's nothing that means that the entire money they had the fund they had is for feeding the people the needy people needy people church think about the life of the church what do you do with the uh, the blessings god has given you are we real followers of jesus why our pastors and leaders are super spiritualizing things 
Thank God Peter and other disciples didn't tell Jesus. Jesus, we they are full, spiritual. No, they all mean the real hunger. Real hunger and real food, they are saying. The real hunger and real food. Let me tell you. It is sin to live as a rich man in a world where poor die because of poverty. It is sin to live as a rich man in a world where people die because of poverty. The world will make you a self-lover. You will not see the poor in the world. You will only see your need. That is the work of sin. How far you will be transformed in seeing the needy people and reaching out to them and sacrificially giving the five loaves and two fish you have. That is meant for your food. But you are giving it now. That is the influence of Jesus. If you are touched by Jesus, if you get any influence of Jesus, you will do it. But we super spiritualize and we lift our hands and uh, hallelujah. Neighbor is dying because of poverty. That super spirituality God hates. Jesus had this problem. You hypocrites, Pharisees, you super spiritualize. And you don't even help the yoke of the people. You are adding yoke upon yoke. We had to live in the real world. They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, we have only five laws. Then finally when there was no way forward, Jesus made them understand, if you have anything, you should bring it. If you have money, you should bring it. If you have, they said, only five laws and two fish. When there was no other way, Jesus did the miracle. When you are keeping $100,000 in your bank and asking the Lord, Lord bless me, Lord bless me, the Lord will not answer you. The Lord will not do anything. When there is nothing with you, the Lord can multiply that. When you are bringing what you have, the Lord will multiply it. You keep something aside and you come and cry to the Lord, that God will not do. When there is no other way, when there was no other way, Jesus brought it. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass and take the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. No, he didn't give directly to the people. He gave it to the disciples. You feed the people. You feed the people. You feed the needy. You give to them. And the disciples gave them to the crowd. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. Moving forward fast. I already mentioned it. You can move if that is not working. Jesus was hungry. Jesus looked to heaven. Looked to heaven. He blessed the bread and fish. Jesus broke it and gave it to the disciples. And disciples gave them to the crowd. Disciples gave them to the crowd. And in the early church, we exactly see that. The early church was doing that. Jesus is ever compassionate. He continues his work of healing. Do we fully believe him? Do we fully believe him? Jesus demands his followers to be responsible for the hungry. Are we responsible followers of Jesus? James, the brother of Jesus, who saw Jesus from his childhood, when he was addressing the entire Jerusalem council, he says, remember the poor. Because my brother, my Lord, my Savior told, remember the poor. And James' warning message is that, remember the poor. Are we responsible followers of Jesus? Number three, Jesus feeds the hungry, but through his disciples. But through his disciples, are we prepared to feed the hungry? Super spiritualizing. Stop super spiritualizing. Live in the real world. Would you please stand up for the prayer? Why do we super spiritualize? Because we cannot accept what Jesus taught. We don't want to take what Jesus is giving. We want to live in our selfish world. Self-love. When someone comes with a request and need, the same people all the time give. Same people do it. And I sometimes I think like, um, um, 
are we really following jesus or are we just uh, pampering in the church comforting ourselves uh, we go back full because our worship was beautiful and those things uh, or are we challenged by the word of god to do something new something different something because the lord is breaking my heart to reach out to somebody somewhere whom i don't know but the lord knows and he created me and him in his image and i must serve them because they are created in his image his image which i claim for myself let's pray father in jesus name we come to your presence and we commit ourselves before you we are just weak fragile human beings we terribly fail in following you lord send your holy spirit so that we will have a heart like yours to see the needy around us around the world help us o lord you told us you feed the hungry help us to do your work lord help us lord thank you lord for speaking to us in jesus precious name we pray